Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Pamela, and you are watching Pam Entertainment TV, where we review movies, television series, and incidents in pop culture just to see how those incidents affect our daily lives. Today, it's pop culture chat. Pop culture chat. Pop culture chat. Number four. All right. We're, today we're going to be reviewing the Jesse Smollier racial uh, attack incident. Uh, the reason why I'm reviewing it because it is in trial and I think today is going to be the day that they are going to uh, conclude the trial. It's my understanding that Jesse Smollier may take the stand where he may have already taken the stand. Uh, as I record this, they are in court so they may, uh, if uh, there is a verdict done before I finish this uh pop culture chat i will uh come in and let you know but i wanted to give uh first a timeline of what's going on with oh jesse uh and my timeline comes from a, a news article from complex.com they don't have the author's name um up here at the top yes they do they it's a timeline of jesse smollier's case by call K-H-A-L. He is the deputy editor of Pop Culture and resident old something at Complex. He's got some fancy title, fancy name. Let's see if they'll pop it up. Yeah. Yeah, deputy editor, Pop Culture, uh, resident old. I guess he's the resident old head. And his name is Carl. So he wrote this article. Shout out to you. I'm about to use your material in my review. You did a wonderful, wonderful job in your timeline. So we want to kind of go over what's going on with this Mr. Jesse Smollett. So basically uh, in the timeline, because these are the things that are going to be important. <clears throat> Back in January of 22, January 22nd of 2019, uh, Jesse was on the on in the studio of the television series Empire. You remember Empire? I think Empire stopped taping that next year. I think that was the last year. Twenty twenty was the last year of Empire. But he was on the set of Empire, and apparently there was a letter received that had some racial and homophobic slurs, and also this letter contained some type of white powder. I don't remember if they tested that white powder to see what that white powder was. But the first thing everyone probably thought was anthrax because that has been something in the news that people have done. So I don't even remember hearing that there was a letter sent there. You know, that didn't make big, big news. What made big news is a week later, it was reported that Jesse Smollett had been arrest not arrested had been attacked uh apparently the way the story went is that about two o'clock in the morning jesse went to subway was going to subway um to get i guess to get a sandwich or something to get something to eat and on his way there or on his way back he was attacked uh he claimed he was attacked by two white men with red caps and they beat him up they put a noose around his neck. They started saying racial and homophobic slurs. Uh, and they told him that he was this was MAGA country, bitch, and all of these types of things. Why is that important? MAGA is the acronym for Make America Great Again. And this was the slogan used by Donald Trump in his 2016 presidential campaign, uh, and which resonated with a lot of white people. And thus, he won the presidency over uh, Hillary Clinton. That made big news. Everybody heard about Jesse Smollett being uh, attacked, Jesse Smollett. Uh, and then we started hearing about the... Uh, the letter, because it wasn't, it wasn't released until later. So then, you know, we have like on the 31st, so the police, Chicago police starts to investigate. On the 31st of January, we get the CCTV footage showing that there are two men leaving the uh, scene. Uh, they, they were just uh, 
they weren't called suspects, but people of interest and they were looking for them. And apparently that they followed them, um, basically back to wherever they were. They talked to them. And, um, a little later, uh, and that day on January 31st, the Smollier family reads a statement saying that they support their brother. They stand by their brother and how they want everybody to uh, deem this as a, a racial and homophobic crime. Because, you know, that at, at that point, I don't know if that would have spurred the, the federal government to come in. Not sure yet. And I'm not sure if Illinois' uh, hate crime, if they have a hate crime statute on their books. So in um, February, uh, a couple of days later, which was a couple of days, he um, he started receiving a lot of support from like John Legend, because you know John Legend is from Chicago, the NAACP, um, and he released a statement um about the incident and how he hoped that everything was going to be handled correctly. Da, 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 da. After he, he was attacked. Now this is January 2nd. Now he's supposed to be all bruised up and stuff like that. He decides that he's going to go and he's going to perform. And I think at that performance, he called himself the gay Tupac. Uh, then a couple of weeks later, everything is going, going forward. Everything is doing things. So, He's cooperating with the, the police investigation, but kind of not. So when they started asking him for his phone records and all this other stuff, he was like, I don't understand why you would ask for my phone records. You know, I was attacked on the street. What does my phone records have to do with anything and all this other stuff? So there was a... He gives them something. He gives them some of the phone records, but I, I remember it, was not, it wasn't what they wanted. And so they were wanting his phone records. He was refusing to give that information. Then you have uh, two men were arrested. Now, who are these two men? They are for the crime. They are Nigerian brothers, Olin Olinjo, Olabinjo, and Abinbola, Asandaria. And they said that they were extras. One of them was an extra on Empire. So he was working on Empire. So then you've got uh, these, these young men arrested because they find out that they're the ones that had the, uh, the, um, the red hats. They caught them going to a Home Depot. They caught them going someplace with that. So then the, the infamous uh, interview with Robin Roberts. And he gets on there and he's mad that people didn't believe what he said. You know, he knew the Austin Dario brothers and all of this other stuff. And he want people to understand that it was a racial thing and he wasn't backing down. Basically, he wasn't backing down. So then, here we go into a little bit after February, it's February 15th. The police uh, released the Austin Dario brothers and then things started coming out that this whole thing was staged. The Austin Dario brothers said that... Uh, was saying one thing, Jesse Smollier was saying another thing, and basically the Austin Dario brothers said, hey, look, Jesse paid us to stage this because Jesse was mad because the uh, the Empire Studios said police did not take seriously the letter that came in uh, with, the, with the white powder and the racial and homophobic slurs because they didn't take that letter seriously Jesse wanted something that would make the, take that letter seriously. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with all of this going on, there was like several snowball things that were happening. Once it seemed that Jesse was telling a lie, I know Empire... Uh, Divorced themselves from him, basically. They uh, they first put him on suspension, and then they said that they wrote his character out. Uh, also, what happened is they started, the police were like, well, wait a minute. This is not really a crime. What is a crime is wasting our time uh, reporting and staging and acting a crime, and then reporting it and knowing that, you, that it wasn't, you were just trying to get attention. So the police... Uh, 
charged uh, Jesse with a, filing a, a false police report. He was arrested. He was brought into custody. And this is where things start to get a little, um, a little, little murky, little murky. Because like I said, he got, he got, first he was supposed to have been suspended for a couple of episodes and then they just decided not to bring him back. Um, and, uh, and from what I remember, it was a lot of his, you know, his cast members and stuff like that. They uh, supported him. And then when they found out what the Osendario brothers said, they felt like that Jesse Smollier was going to be a distraction. Because you had a lot of his, his cast members uh, that just were looking at him sideways. I'm not, I can't tell you what their emotions were, but they felt uncomfortable knowing that he was coming back to set. He had accused uh, people who had worked on the set of doing some things to him. And they just felt a little uncomfortable with him being on there and they felt like his presence would be a distraction they found out that he wrote a a, a check to the Austin Dario brothers now he claimed he wrote the check because they were going to be training him he was supposed to be going on tour. He was supposed to be doing another movie role. He was supposed to be doing something. And he wanted them to train him to get him buffed up. The the, the Osendario brothers said that was supposed to be a payment for him for them doing the deed. Then there was a big old mess uh, with it. This was in May. So we're, we're, we've gone from February. Then we go to May. We've got hospital employees. They were fired because uh, they were accessing the Jesse Smollier's, um hospital records. And I don't know if they were giving that information to the police, but they were fired. And they said that that was dozens of them. Workers and nurses at this Northwestern hospital. Yeah inappropriately so they had no business being on there looking at his record child they was up there looking so then the grand jury back in march of 2019 they indict him on 16 felony counts at first he was charged with one felony count for filing a false report uh i'm reading this article really really quick They don't outline all the 16, but they do, it, it, it all has to deal with the false reporting, it seems like. The Osendario brothers, it started coming out, and, and here's where the thing for the Osendario brothers started getting a little, little hectic, uh, because everyone knew that Jesse Smollier was gay, uh, it started coming out that the, uh, the Os, they don't, they don't confirm it, but it does come out that, uh, there is a they are uh, adjacent to a lot of uh, uh, what is considered to be homosexual and gay uh, activity. They don't come out and say that they haven't come out. I don't think that they've done that. So I'll just say adjacent, which was uh, a particular problem for them because if you all aren't aware, um, j the black like just like the black community here in the United States, the black community, the African community in Nigeria has a very disdain uh, for homosexuals. And I think that they can be arrested for being homosexual. Uh, some of that has to do with a lot of these white American preachers going over uh, to Nigeria to preach against homosexuality and all of these different things. Uh, we'll have a whole nother pop ch culture chat about something about that but basically what i'm saying is you'll have a lot of these american pastors and 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 preachers and missionaries going over into africa uh using christianity as a way to come in and to pervert uh christianity and to pervert the course of the government there they use that to see if they can do that uh, and once they do that, and once these certain laws, and once you have folks over there uh, concentrating on, oh, well, the homosexuals are causing the problem through our, our thing, then once the Christians come in and they uh, infiltrate, I call it infiltration, I'm talking about white Christians, because that's how it's always done. You have the first fat, you have the first wave of the invasion come with the Christians and the Christian missionaries, they come in to see what they can do. And then once they realize that they can do that, then you have the second wave. It'd be armies or whatever it is to come in because there is a resource in Africa that they want. And so they figure that the only way that they can 
get to that resources unfettered is to cause as much confusion as possible. So what all the uh, people are back and forth with each other, they're just going in and they've caused all this confusion. They're just going around the corner, uh, getting the resource, buying the land where the resource is on and then saying, Hey, we can, um, we can, we can offer y'all jobs and stuff like that without them. You know, it's a whole thing. I'm not saying that, um, uh, people on the continent are stupid or anything like that. I'm just saying that there are there is waves and levels of manipulation that happens. You see that going on with the Chinese right now. They're going into Africa because they need all these materials for you, you all cell phones, our cell phones and things like that. So they're going in doing the same thing. Um, offering these people that they can go and get a good education in China. And then when those black people go to China, they treat them like uh, crap. But I digress. We're talking about Jesse Smollett. Uh, but anyway, he's been charged. He pleads not guilty. Now, this was around March 2019. Now, now here, here's what happened. Uh, the charges against Jesse were dropped by state attorney um, Kim Fox. Uh, Kim Fox was elected during the time that uh, during that wave where uh, I guess Donald Trump was elected. And she, I don't think she had been office that long. But anyways, apparently the Smollier family, she knew the Smollier family. Something happened. There was some transpire or something like that. Uh, she received all the information and, 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 and all this other stuff. And the fact that he forfeited his bond to the city of Chicago. She just dismissed the whole case. Right. So then you had the fraternal order of police. You had the city police of Chicago. They were P old. OK, they were spitting bricks how mad they were because they felt like she had used her um, office inappropriately that she should have charged it but she didn't they felt like she if she was going to if she felt the way she felt she could have recused herself so they um a year later uh they they have a special prosecutor to look at the case and to go over the case and after that and this was in february 2020 this was right before the panoramic uh actually hit they hired a uh, special prosecutor, Dan Rib Webb, and he indicted Jesse on six, six counts of disorderly conduct, falsifying, um, what do he do? Okay. Uh, disorderly conduct is what he got. And they said that had he had been, had he had been charged and convicted of the 16 counts that they had back in 2019 he would have spent about 50 years in prison and that gives me on the case of okay if he has a disorderly conduct or if he has falsifying police who is he falsifying uh because you can only you can only tell a lie to the police a, a lie to police one time unless he's talked to them several times because i remember one time he just wasn't talking to them at all so they uh they charged him with the six k they charged him with the six counts and this is what he's in jail for now okay so why am i that was the background information and why am i reviewing this case and what what does it have how is that going to affect our daily lives the thing that hit me about this case that uh caused me to be like you know what this is what we have to do on a macro level. And what I mean by macro, and I mean just like throughout the uh, black folks in the United States. That's the big thing, just the totality of black folks in the United States. And then when I say micro, I mean black folks within their specific, in a specific community, a specific city, county, or state. That's what I mean by macro and micro. On a micro level, uh, that affected the city of Chicago in a way that, number one, uh, if you all are not familiar, the city of Chicago has had a lot of incidents of uh, police brutality, uh, death while in custody issues. 
And around this time that was happening, this, the, the city of Chicago just uh, lost a lawsuit where they had to pay a family uh, millions of dollars for the death of their child. It was discovered that the police lied about the incident and the police had to then pay that family for the death of that child. Um, I think some of the officers um, were indicted. I have to go back and find that particular place case. If I do it in post, you'll see it. The name of the case coming across here. But on that level, the police was having those, those types of issues. And there was a momentum of change, causing change on how the police department in Chicago, how they dealt with the, uh, black and uh, people of color communities, how they policed within those communities. So there was a really big momentum of getting uh, some changes, some real effective changes for that. Jesse comes along and he does this because he is upset about, and I'm, I don't know what he was, I am using allegedly, Allegedly, he was upset about how the Empire staff handled uh, this letter that was that came in with the racial slurs and like, racial slurs and the homophobic slurs. Instead of having a conversation with all parties on how he felt, he decides to take this drastic action. So why are we talking about this? It's about accountability and appropriateness. The appropriate thing to have for him to do have done when he received this, because I can't tell you not to be scared or anything like that, because had I received a letter like that, that would have shook me. I would have been shook if. But at the same time, the appropriate thing to have done was to sit down, have a, let, uh, uh, have a conversation with the Empire Production, even with police. Uh, if you had connections, allegedly, with the prosecution, have those conversations. So that they would know that this is something that is uh, upsetting you causing you fear and then there could have been solutions and things that could have been done to, to, to help alleviate those things. You don't do that or you don't take it or continue to follow through. You could have done that. You could have had a conversation. They could have poof poofed you. You didn't take it to the next level. So you decide I'm going to make them listen to me. I'm going to get out here, allegedly, because he hasn't been convicted of it. And we're going to stage this race thing. And that's going to really put them some emphasis on them trying to figure out who wrote that letter, right? So you constructed this whole, you constructed this whole thing. Because you want emphasis on this letter because you want them to take that seriously. So now what's happened is you have taken this and snowballed it into something completely different. And you do not want to take accountability for that. What you have done, let's talk about, remember I was talking about the police, on this micro level. The people of color in Chicago had a really good momentum going. My alarm. The people of Chicago had a really good momentum of doing effective police change. That they were, they, they, it was, it was heading in that direction that there were going to be conversations had because they were going through a lot of different things. It was a great direction uh, for them to do change. Then you come in with your with 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 your selfishness 
because you wanted more attention to put on this letter. What have you done on that level? You have now turned the tide of where the people had all the people had the momentum to get some changes done. Now you make the police look like pseudo heroes. They have discovered that you're lying. So now that they've discovered that you're lying, why would they have to do that? Because you have now reinforced in their head and then the, then the other people within that community that, hey, y'all just scream and holler and emotional and all this other stuff. Y'all always be doing something. Talking about black folks and pe people of color. Y'all always be doing something. So this is why we do the things that we do because, you know, y'all be lying on a lot of stuff. This whole case messed that up. So now you don't hear anything uh, coming out of there about that. Now you continually hear about all the crime, which you should, because there is, there is an issue that black folks up in that in that city should be dealing with and dealing with and putting a kibosh on, not looking for somebody else to put a kibosh on. You're supposed to be putting a kibosh on that, just like every community, because I don't want I don't want it to be misheard. Black folks don't commit more crimes than any other race here in this United States. But it's just that we have had a historical, uh, and it's in history, that we are blamed for everything. And if we commit crimes, it is highlighted to the third and fourth degree and, and deemed to be evil and demonic and all those different things. We've heard white people say it and we hear black people say the same thing. Uh, but, you know, you people of other races commit crimes um, is either always looked at as, oh, it was, it, you know, we, we could have seen that coming or it was, oh, it was, it's, um, you know, that doesn't happen in our town, but baby, when you look at all these crime shows and all this other stuff, who was being killed, it's almost glorified in a way so they can, they can, um, they can get your, uh, feelings involved in it. But we won't go there. I'm, I'm going off. I'm going off the. I'm going off on a tangent. But going back, so on a on, on a micro level, that's how it's affected. It affects on a macro level because when you start talking about uh, change and hate crimes and things like that, you can't get that legislation passed because they'll go back towards you are now going to be a person in history if you are convicted. Uh, that lied about a hate crime you're going to be on the same level as the Tawana Brawleys now if you don't know who Tawana Brawley is look her up google it you can but that was a whole similar situation to old Jesse uh, but she she messed around and got the black community all up and around and then it was just because she didn't want to be in trouble for staying out late so she convinced she, Tawana did this whole thing that these guys uh, assaulted her, uh, smeared feces on her, and then wrote racial slurs on her body. And it come to find out that she did all of that because she didn't want to be held accountable or get in trouble for staying out late. And again, that was done too at the time when there was some racial animus going on in New York City. And that case kind of derailed or oh I'm trying to find that word the populace didn't take the seriousness of enacting laws about hate crimes and stuff like that because they can go back to Tawana Brawley lied now they can go back to Jesse Smollett lied so are you all lying about hate crimes that are happening to you when we all know that there's a lot of things that are going on but these types of cases on a micro and on a macro level, they will affect us. So that's basically uh, why I wanted to talk about that. For the, you know, be accountable for your actions. I understand that no one likes to be in trouble. No, li no one likes to be told that what they've done or uh, how they are working out is wrong or is inappropriate. However, it is important, whether you've done something bad, whether you've done something indifferent, whether you've done something good and it causes problems, that you take accountability for the actions that you have. Number two, uh, the appropriateness of things. 
your accountability level goes down if you take appropriate actions. You staging a whole hate crime because you wanted attention put towards this letter. It was so inappropriate. The most appropriate action would have been to pull out your advocate advocate hat and advocate for yourself and advocate and you could have pulled that out with hey we as actors and 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 people who work on production sets we are getting a lot of hate mail hate crime and stuff like that we want more emphasis tech put forth to make sure that you all are doing everything that you can to make sure that we're safe because we're having to we're having to work in different countries we're having to have to work in different cities and we need to make sure that you're taking all of these things seriously that would have been appropriate. So that's my pop culture chat. Uh, as of now, I don't see if the case is over. Let's see. Um, okay, so they say that he takes this, the, the stand. So it looks like they said the fifth day of the trial. So it doesn't look like the trial is... Uh, is over yeah nbc chicago tribune the today show wall street journal and the washington post are all um reporting that justin smollier has testified he took the stand first it was expected and uh then he took the stand so uh you all go over there and review that. I, I'm, this wasn't to um, be a to go over the case by case, but I just wanted to go over the two things that were very important to me when we go on in our daily lives is do the appropriate thing and take accountability. I know it's hard. It's difficult. But there are a lot of different things that you can do. There's a lot of different tools that you can you can use right here on our on, on this good old internet that you can look up. You could just type how to take accountability, and it will take you to a plethora of different resources to do that. Because your actions, our actions, can derail things that were were months and years in the making when we're doing things because we want things done now. So I don't want you to mishear me on this point. I do not think that he should not have taken action with that letter coming out. I, I, I don't want you to mishear me, but I am saying that there was an appropriate action today and this wasn't it. Now you have put people's careers on the line. You have put the kibosh on your career because they're going to come out and say that you, you know, they're going to come out and poof, poof, that you're a liar. Nobody wants that disruption on no set. You've got a sister out here who is working and doing well on her own merit. And, you know, you know how people, they're fickle anyway. You might be putting her stuff in jeopardy uh, because of your lies. And because, you know, you're her family member and family member is going to support you. It doesn't mean that they agree with what you've done, but as a family, you, 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 you form a united front and you support your family member. And that's what they're doing. That's what your family is doing. And you're putting their reputation and their ability to uh, be heard individually and as a small yay family because you out here lying. Allegedly. So. Y'all take care of each other. Be accountable for what you say and what you do. And when you feel that you have been wrong, don't operate in anger. Sit back so that then you can think about the, the uh, appropriate way to deal with what's going on with you. All right. That was my pop, pop, pop culture chat number four, talking about old Jesse Smoye. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know uh, about this Jesse Smollier case. Uh, if anything in, uh, that you've heard or anything that has heard come out in the news that I didn't talk about, put it down in the comments. Let's talk about, let's chat about it in the comments. All right, people, 
You have a great rest of one wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.